exactly these stories begin with a long, long time ago. And so I'm going to start this story just like that. A long, long time ago, some 20 million years ago, we had great apes. We called them the hominids. And I'm sure these great apes swung from great trees, ate great fruits, and overall did great things. And after about some 16 billion years, they discovered bipedalism and they went for a walk. Somewhere around that time, Charles Darwin, we all know Charles Darwin, he talked about evolution and he must have spoken to an awestruck audience because they had never thought that they descended from the great apes. And thanks to a lot of amazing work done by paleoarchaeologists across Morocco, Ethiopia, Siberia, we now know another story. And the story is that we Homo sapiens weren't alone. There were at least about six other species with us and we were in this genus. So we had different kind of species all around and just like the Homo sapiens of today where we are eradicating every species all over the place, at that time too we must have done something really strange. We weren't the strongest like the Neanderthals, we weren't as handy as the Hebilis. However, the Homo sapiens wiped out every single species in the Homo genius. Every one of them gone. Around the same time, one of Darwin's early supporters tripped upon a line, an abrupt boundary that separated the Asian fauna from the Australian fauna. We, Homo sapiens at that time, must have also crossed this abrupt boundary. It was called the Wallace's line. Now, I often want to think what goes on in people's minds when something as great as this happens. I also want to know what goes on in the minds of every one of you. And I find the best way to do it is to ask. And so I ask, what do you do? Most often, I get an answer about where people are in their lives. They say they're working, they say they're studying, but sometimes I get some strange ones. And these strange ones are we are living, breathing, sitting, laughing, thinking, wondering, and they repeat that all over again. But really what I want to ask when I ask this question, I want to know what's going on in your mind. I really want to know what would you do if you had the opportunity to. I also want to know what probably could have happened in the 1970s. What was in the mind of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates? I want to know what happened during 1981 and 1984 when kids born during this age group went on to create, most of us know, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Quora, Reddit, Airbnb. It was just this cohort born between 1981 and 1984. I really think it is all of these collaborations when they come together that we give rise to a new era of thinking. These people are who Michael, uh, Malcolm Gladwell calls the outliers. Much like at the Maker's Asylum, we created a C-3PO robot. And if you are a Star Wars fanboy, you know about the droid that I'm talking about. This C-3PO robot brought together an origami artist and a spray painter, a mechanical engineer, a robotics engineer to do this, much like the engineers in the room today. We also went on to create a laser harp that has no strings, a magic mirror that talks back to you. And we created skateboards that got everybody from embedded electronics to artists to woodworkers participating in exactly that. We think that these collaborative skills, this intertwined thinking, these unimaginable boundaries that we cross actually give rise to a new era of thought and fuels all fields, right from bionics and food, uh, medical technology, financial technology and beyond. This intertwining of thought is what we may require to go into the next generation, to cross our Wallace lines. 
Everybody's talking about artificial intelligence. Up till now, the early humans to the modern man has always been about biology and organic chemistry. But in our lifetime, we might partner with artificial intelligence and create inorganic life forms that will not only be the dominant life forms here on Earth, but go beyond into the galaxy. And this will be our moment when we've created a cognizant system and we've created a new way of living. Let's take some cues from Philip Weiss's work on hyperthinking. This is what may be required to catapult us from here and now and leapfrog across our Wallace's line. He says, why don't we hyper shift our thinking, hyper act in that direction, hyper learn everything that is around us to learn and hyperlink with a cult of unimaginable brains all around us. We're familiar with Siri, Cortana, Watson, Google Assistant, and they're part of our daily lives. Watson now no longer has only details of our medical history, but can also predict our emotions and provide solutions. After all, emotions are just secondary biochemistry. The masters that we've known before us have some amazing personalities, what the world call T personalities, what I call uber slashies. Leonardo da Vinci, Charlie Chaplin, Isaac Newton. We know them mainly for who they are. But let's see whether did they have something more beyond what their primary talents were. We need to bring forth our uber slashies and come together in collaborative ways to ensure that we've gone beyond our current levels of consciousness. We will need to bring our uber slashes and our collaborative skills together if we've got to go to the next level. And this may not be an option, really. We will need this collaborative thinking. We need everybody in the room to communicate with each other if we want to do simple things, maybe from cleaning the Yamuna, to cleaning really other rivers, to keeping the lights on, to staying healthy, to growing food more intelligently. The uber slashes is what's going to be required and I really think we may not have a future because if you think for a minute, the future is right here, right now. Thank you.